McCain Wells, and we're in Melton, Iowa, and uh, it's November 22nd, and um, work on the farm with my dad and grandpa, and we've got a dairy, and then have organic and conventional row crops, and um, also I sell seed. Got into using winter wheat as a cover crop just because it seemed like it was resilient enough to come up um, in harsher conditions and then versus like a rye it doesn't get away from you as much in the spring so sometimes rye can really take off if you if you have you know moisture or something in the spring and you need to get in there and be terminating it and it just it seems like in a week it can take really overgrow and stuff versus the wheat where it's more a slower growth and a little easier to manage in the spring we would probably focus on it pretty early because um, in the past we've had times where you if you don't get it terminated early enough, then it can cause issues. So like this spring, for example, there was a lot of guys around here that had weed out that were even gonna go to beans and it got really wet there for us. I mean, there was a very early time and if you didn't kill it then, then it got wet for like a month and then it was the middle of May. And some guys took cover crop wheat to, to wheat and then put second crop beans after it, which wasn't all bad, especially this year, we ended up getting late rains and stuff, but well, some I guess but uh we've also taken cover crop wheat to grain and that low poundage really shows up in the yield so even though it may look awesome at 60 pounds it, it, when you go to combine it the yield's not usually generally not there whenever we do a burn down I mean it's best to wait yeah at least that I think they're recommending 10 days now it depends what you burn it down with I guess but it's nice to give a little time to to terminate we seeded um, 120 pounds an acre of wheat and then it was untreated because it's organic so generally there's not I mean there is treatments that the people have but we just do it untreated um, <clears throat> and then actually what we do most of the time so like after this on the organic rotation then we'll go to hay so we'll put the wheat out for the cash crop and then come back in and put in a hay mix um, kind of some different rates that we use in the wheat um, Mainly if you're typically when it's a cover crop, we kind of stick around that 60 pound, which is what we consider a half rate for, for grazing or for cover. And then if we take it to grain, we'll, we'll be in that 120 pound range. You can get a higher yield if you can get more plants out there. Um, and then I've got guys that do cover all the way down to 30 pounds, 25, 30 pounds. And at that point, you don't have as many plants out there, but depending on how it grows it can kind of bush out more um and, and could still cover some ground with that and and especially if it's in a mix you can cut it back a lot too with other stuff so on this field here we used a great plains 30 foot drill um, and the spacing would be seven and a half inches and we used a seeding rate of 120 pounds per acre um, We've actually got scales on our drill. That helps a lot because <laughs> a lot of guys, <laughs> when you sell them seed, they're like, oh, the drill, you just open it up and let it, you know, run out what it does. And so we put invested in those scales and then have it, you know, telling the tractor how many acres you went through. And you can kind of adjust your drill a lot more accurately with that in there. And it makes it feel like, one, you're getting on what you want to. And two, you're not wasting seed by putting on more than what you don't need. So this drill here is a 30 foot drill. We used to have like a 15 and then a 20 foot drill. The 30 foot is nice to get around and cover a lot more acres, um, a lot quicker. Uh, and it's nice, it runs so like each section on here is 10 foot sections. So in the field, it kind of flexes on those 10 foot sections um, and, and does a really good job. Basically it's got small boxes in the back like if we're running a radish or a turnip, we'll put them in through the back. Um, and then it's got the large hopper in the front, like wheat, rye, grasses, they all go through there. Um, each of these is like seven and a half inches apart. Um, and then it's got depth. It's got a depth setting and then kind of a down pressure setting. So there's springs up there too. Um, and basically you get that, whatever your soil's like, you can kind of adjust the setting. So adjust your down pressure um and adjust your depth and that's pretty easy i mean you just move the 
move them one way or the other and you can get a different depth. Um, we still use the markers too. I mean, we've got in our one tractor, we don't have auto steer on it that we use this on. Um, but we kind of have a, we have a GPS in there that shows coverage. So you know how many acres and stuff you're doing. But as far as how you know where you're going, we still use the markers. <laughs> Just easier to see. So one of the upgrades we added to this drill would be the way way bar back here. And so you can get them for the whole drill, but they're kind of pricey. So we just did it on the one box and then we know how to set the rest of it. All you do is lift this box up and then you put in these way bars here. That goes to a scale head in the tractor. And so you can use that to really dial in how many pounds per acre you're getting on of whatever you're putting on. Another tip we try to do is write it down in the book <laughs> when, it's right, when it's working well. Cause you always think, oh, I'm gonna remember that for next year and then you don't, <laughs> don't. and so it's, it at least gives you a starting point. Mm -hmm.